Hey guys, Chad here with Reptile Rangers. Now, I know it's been just a few days since we've done anything. This right here, we've got a bunch of different topics that people have asked us to film about. And so now I'm trying to get caught up and we're gonna try uh, me and my wonderful, uh, wonderful production team and uh, and a lot of my guys here at the, the Kernersville Reptile Zoo. We're gonna try and get some of this stuff filmed. I'm gonna have the boys doing some filming, so on and so forth. But today, in this episode, we're gonna cover MBD, metabolic bone disease, all right? Now we've had a lot of people ask us and even in our training course and i've got uh it's not the only training course that that people go through there's a lot of snake handling courses so on and so forth whatever but i've got the only training course on the east coast that i know of um that deals in a broad range of topics when it comes to reptiles including laws and uh, human medical first aid and uh, animal sign symptoms and how to treat issues and certain handling and there's all kinds of different things we do in this and one of the things that we cover and one of the things that's out there that there's a lot of information but a lot of misinformation about is MBD now remember just because somebody is telling you this will do this or this will do this they may just be spouting something that they learned from somebody else or they learned on Google or some Facebook forum all right or some some internet forum with that being said, that does not mean that everybody has bad information. Um, that also does not mean they have the right information either. And so as we go through these topics, we're not gonna spend long amounts of time you know, going over you know, the equations and the science and the anatomy and everything about everything, but we're gonna give you the simplified versions of each issue, how it happens, what you can do to prevent it, and then if you need to see a vet or a medical center like us, whatever the case may be, then you go from there and you see the professional that knows what they're looking out for, and hopefully the vet is a professional. There's a lot of them out there that are not. They do it for the money. We've discussed this. Um, and we, as a facility, are gonna give you the correct information. We're gonna give you the appropriate information, but we wanna keep it simple. It's not about trying to charge you a bunch of money to give you a bunch of unanswered questions that you have to leave with, but then you're not exactly sure, okay? Now, let's get started. MBD, metabolic bone disease. Now, what is metabolic bone disease? Metabolic bone disease is two things. In young subjects, it is a deformity of the bones, which can also cause spinal issues, nervous issues, loss of muscular function, can also cause neurological issues and seizures, okay? In old subjects, the same thing can apply as far as loss of muscular function, neurological, uh, potential neurological issues, and seizures. But it's not a deformity of the bones because in older subjects, their bones are already formed. They're already big, kind of like babies versus adults. Adults, their bones are formed, they're there. In older subjects, it is known more as brittle bone syndrome. Their bones are not as dense, they're not as hard, they break much easier. Um, or they lose calcium within that, becoming, like I said, less dense, less thick, they're in turn causing muscular issues, causing a lack of calcium within inside of the skeletal system, which can cause their bones to break easier, can also cause uh, nervous, cent uh, central nervous system issues, uh, twitching and, and, and muscle, muscle twitching, toe twitching. Uh, it can cause a lack of function from the brain to, to the legs. Uh, causing the legs to move, so on and so forth. Uh, you'll see in pictures kind of how MBD works, especially when it starts young. It can cause a deformity in the face as well, short snouts, real rubbery jaws. There's a lot of issues that MBD can be caused from. Now, we're gonna go over uh, the science behind certain things that's been preached for years and that you can do if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to if you don't want to. And then we're gonna go over some things that's been preached that, uh, oh, you don't wanna do this you know what, it's okay to do that kind of thing as well, depending on how you do it, all right? Now, metabolic bone disease, 
Young subjects, deformity of the bones, old subjects, brutal bone syndrome, that's just a simplified breakdown. It gets it can get much more complicated than that if you want, want it to, but that's the simplified version. Remember, we're trying to keep it simple for you guys. That way it makes your reptile care and management much easier. All right, so let's get started. How does MBD happen? MBD happens from either a lack of calcium and or UVB, okay? Now, all reptiles produce vitamin D2 or VD2 in their bodies. Their bodies cannot naturally convert that into VD3. What does VD3 do? Of course, we know what VD3 does. It's like vitamin D milk. It helps with bone growth, formation, and density and hardness, okay? So that your bones grow straight, hard, and true, all right? Now, when you have a lack of UVB, UVB converts VD2 to VD3. Okay, it does the conversion naturally. But here's the problem, and here's some things that, again, the benefits of being me, I don't care what you know. some of the quote-unquote uh, internet know-it-alls have to say. UVB kills things, we know this. It causes things to die much quicker. The effects of ultraviolet light will actually harm skin, shorten lifespan, it can cause cancer, we know that. It can cause all kinds of long-term side effects. But UVB does cause a VD2 to VD3 conversion so that their bones grow hard and true and straight. Now, with that being said, calcium powder with vitamin D3 does the exact same thing, but it's like giving a direct injection of the calcium and vitamins. Now, am I saying you shouldn't go out and get a UVB bulb? No, not at all. Of course not. If you didn't want to, you did not have to, you can use a mercury vapor bulb, which is almost like the true one. You can use UVB bulbs that you get from Petco PetSmart or LLL Reptile or you know off of any line anywhere. Um, and they work. The problem is UVB bulbs from most of your pet stores are only effective 12 inches or less to the bulb. So think about this. If you have a full spectrum 10.0 desert, whatever the manufacturer, whatever their rating is, however they choose to rate that, you go six inches, about six inches, it's getting the full effects. You go a little bit farther, it's getting less effects, maybe a 7.0. Uh, down here at about 10 inches, let's say you're getting maybe a 3.0, and then right here, it's non-existent, so you're just wasting your power. Now, that's what the regular store bulb, UVB bulbs, the little curly Q bulbs. With mercury vapor bulbs, those are fantastic sun replacements, but you have to be very, very cautious and very careful about the distances in which you keep the mercury vapor bulb because yes, you can burn one up very quickly, but it's the closest thing to a natural sunlight is the mercury vapor bulbs. I know that uh, a lot of manufacturers are now making some of those heat UVB combos. Those are awesome. They work great uh, because you can get an all-in-one bulb um, and not have to have two fixtures, not have to have two lights, because yes, doing this can get a little expensive on the power bill, especially for desert species when you're having to run a high wattage bulbs. Now, with that being said, with that being said, when we talk about UVB and calcium, you can give way too much calcium, especially if you're doing a UV exposure, you, too much calcium can actually cause just as many problems as not giving enough calcium, okay? So just make sure and understand, if you're doing a UVB bulb, you don't wanna do calcium with a VD3 every single day, and a lot of people do that, and it can cause a lot of people a lot of problems. At best case scenario, you might do just the light spread twice a week uh, on the fruits and veggies of the, of the dragon. Uh, a lot of people talk about dusting crickets with calcium. That you, if, if the powder stays on the crickets, you can do that, but the problem is crickets are a lot like rats. They defecate and, and urinate literally every few steps. So gut loading crickets is not as easy as most people think unless you gut load them and you're immediately throwing them in, okay? Now, with that being said, the calcium powder on your feeders, think about how much calcium powder you waste by trying to put calcium powder on a hard exoskeleton to bug. It's like trying to put water on a wax car. You pour it on there, yeah, you're gonna see a little bit of the dust, but you see a whole lot of that come off because it's just not gonna to stick to it. So it's usually easier to do it to the fruits and vegetables. They get a whole lot more of a direct intake. You can mix it in the water as well. You can mix a little calcium powder in the water, um, in, in their water dish. As they go in and drink it, then they have a little bit there. It's not a whole lot, there's, that's another way to do it. Um, there's liquid vitamin D. There's a lot of applications for that. Some people will put it in uh, 
their uh, dripper systems. Maybe they put it in like a misting sprayer whenever they spray and then of course it goes on because these animals can absorb, they can absorb, um, they can absorb that through their skin. So they still get some of that vitamin and calcium exposure. Now understand, again, like I said, I'm not saying that I'm a proponent of totally throwing away your UVB bulbs, but scientific studies have been proven and done. Let's say, for example, you take a cherry tomato and somebody, the, the scientists took away all UV exposure, UVA, UVB, uh, put it in what we would consider like a perfect atmosphere, 78 to 80 degrees, and that cherry tomato got that big around. That's because of the lack of UV exposure. Now, am I saying totally throw away the UV? No, I am not, uh, nor would I, because yes, the, the reptiles need the UV exposure to help do the VD2 to VD3 conversion. But uh, what I am saying is with calcium powder and vitamin D3, if you're doing a calcium spread and vitamin spread, then you're giving naturally exactly what the sun would be doing a conversion of. So it's totally up to you. I'm giving you both sides. I'm not saying throw away one, I'm not saying throwing away the other, but I'm also at the same time not gonna tell you, it is vital if you don't have UVB, absolutely not. It is not vital for whether you have, you're using UVB and you don't use the calcium, or whether you're using calcium and you don't use the UVB. It is not 100% vital because I have personally seen animals in our, in our facility, our medical center and zoo, live 10, 12, 15 plus years, especially dragons, either with one or with the other, okay? As long as they're getting, their body's getting physically what it needs, physically what it needs, scientifically what it needs, then that's what matters, as long as it's being kept and fed the right stuff, right diet, right exposures, right nutritional uh, supplements. That's what's important, okay? Now, with metabolic bone disease, metabolic bone disease, you need to, if you start seeing the signs of MBD coming up, in the pictures that you've seen with all these curvy spines, the curvy tails, the massively deformed legs, the, the blunted jaws, any of the signs or symptoms of MBD starting to come up, you definitely need to check your calcium VD3 intake and or your UVB bulb exposure. A lot of people when they go to these pet stores, Lord have mercy the pet stores, they sell them these stupid ready-made uh, kits that half the time don't even have the right stuff in it, right? The problem is the pet store employees are there for sales. Most of them don't even have a clue about how to keep reptiles, mammals, or anything else. They're there to just sell animals. So I have people come into the zoo all the time. Well, I was at the pet store, they said this one light right here would be perfect, and they've got a bearded dragon, and they, they barely have a 60-watt bulb and a 40 breeder, not to mention the fact they don't have UVB. It's not warm enough. They're just, they're, it's just being kept totally wrong. And that's not just bearded dragons. It can be chameleons, it can be crested geckos, it can be leopard geckos, it can be uh, frill dragons. I mean, it can be any number of things that they have gotten from somewhere and just did not get the right information. And Lord help you go ask somebody online, and especially in some of your arrogant, egotistical Facebook groups, and you'll get a million different opinions and a lot of smart aleck opinions at that. So it's no wonder nobody wants to go to Facebook Learn because there's a bunch of morons on there to begin with. Okay? Now. We're in this business to learn. We're in this business to help. In helping, when we talk about dietary needs, when we talk about trying to stop MBD in its tracks, it's about nutritional support, UV and calcium exposure. I have seen and we have been able to successfully get a, a dragon that maybe had his legs straight out, they were straight back, had loss of function, to maybe doing some windmilling. They get some function back. Or maybe if they were windmilling, they actually got mobility back. Now, in severe cases of deformity of the bones, there's no way to get that back. Once they're deformed, they're deformed. The only way that you could really do that would be to splint up everything that you have going on and start in with the UVB and the calcium and hope that those bones physically straighten out and harden up straight. There is ways to do that, but it would be very costly. It would be very, very um, time consuming. And most people just aren't gonna do that. So the best thing to do is prevention. It's all about prevention. It's all about having the understanding. It's all about having the knowledge of not letting it happen to begin with. With metabolic bone disease, it's not a complicated subject. It's not. It really does base off of UVB and calcium and 
the right nutritional support. Heat at the right development, UVB or calcium in the right formats, and from there, making sure the animal gets what it needs. Now, when we are trying to treat for metabolic bone disease, it does take a very, very, very long time, okay? We see, we see some very, very bad, badly taken care of animals, okay? Please take this, okay? I've given a simplified version, very, very simplified version of exactly what to look out for. I know this is not very long, but in this particular case, it does not have to be. It really does not have to be very long. It does not have to be complicated. Make sure you're ha you have your habitat set up correctly. Our information is there at Kernersville Reptile Zoo. You can look that up. You, our phone number is all over the world. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to give us a call. If you're not sure, that's what we're here for. We want to be able to help you. We want to be able to get through as many markets as we can to make sure that you're not dealing with animals in a long-term medical effect due to a lack of education, okay? This is about education. This is about a love for these animals. This is about being able to, if you're gonna keep them as a pet, know what you're doing so that you don't have issues and the animal doesn't suffer. Metabolic bone disease, MBD for short, brittle bone syndrome, deformity of the bones, can cause a lot of other issues Remember, make sure your UV is right, make sure your calcium is right, make sure the habitat is set up correctly, make sure the diet is right, and there's so many different kinds. If you ever have any questions, there are a lot of good people out there that do have really good information. They do know what they're doing. Just be careful who you go to. Even if they sound like it, just be careful who you go to, okay? Don't listen to too, too terribly many people because you're gonna get so many different opinions, so many different ways of, oh, I did this and it worked, oh, I did that and it's worked well, congratulations. We want to be scientifically accurate with these animals. They're not guinea pigs and we don't want to make them guinea pigs. We don't want to do trial by error and we don't like trial by error. This is Chad, Reptile Rangers. Make sure you go hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and you want to learn more. It's not all about sensationalism and I'm going to go kiss a cobra or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do something dumb just for a bunch of views. We want people to learn and have fun learning and loving these animals. We will do some fun stuff like that, but otherwise, it's about true education. So come along with us, join us, write us in, let us know if there's something that you want to hear about. We got people doing it all the time. Make sure to subscribe, Reptile Rangers. We hope to see you on the next episode, or we'll see you at the zoo. Later.